have to tell you guys a secret. I've been watching anime longer than I've been reading manga. I know that most of my content has been on manga, but I've just been watching anime longer. Though I have been watching it longer, it's sad to say that I don't consider having favorite series, if that makes sense. I enjoy like each series equally, and of course I could tell if like a series is bad, but I don't have a bad series. <laughs> But last night, I came up with the idea of this video, and I basically told myself, hey, um, you, you gotta have a favorite series. So, I, uh, you know, just went through my old Funimation list and saw all these different series, and there were so many good choices, but I feel like I do have a favorite series. I just never considered it one of my favorite series. But anyway, here's my top three manga series. Word to the wise, my opinion may differ from yours, obviously, because I'm you know, an individual, and you're an individual, and we think differently, but, you know, when it comes to the anime community, it can be very, 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 very toxic, and you know the people I'm talking about, he can't be Goku, though, he can't be Goku, though, those type of people, yo, if you're watching this video, I have a different opinion than yours, and you're just gonna have to deal with it, yo, but anyway, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there, if you disagree with my opinion, then you're free to disagree with my opinion, but at the end of the day, it's drawings, it's just drawings on a screen, yo. <laughs> Each series I'm choosing, I did notice a trend. They all require a certain amount of investment and focus. When I typically watch a series and I don't enjoy, you know, something as simple as the character design or the world itself or the artwork, I get very out of focus and uninvested and I just usually just unengage myself into the series. But what each series does well, they tackle each characteristic that makes a good show to me and they basically amplify it to 10. And if that doesn't make sense, you will see the series I'm talking about and might notice similarities. So coming at number one, we have Hunter Hunter. Hunter x Hunter, however you wanna call it. It's, I just call it Hunter Hunter. What I believe this series does very, very well is this world building. You have different places like your new city, uh, I can't name any off the top of my head. I don't feel like looking it up But then you have like greed island, which is inside of a video game. It seems like a children's show but More of a seinen and it's ironic because it's really a shonen But I'll dive deeper into that later other than world building another one of my favorite things about hunter hunter is its characters each character has a lot of depth and density and you could take someone like Gon, who seems simplistic at first, and then put him into one of the later arcs like the Chimera Ant arc, and they explain why he's so dense. Then you have characters like Hisoka, which his personality and his aura makes him seem stronger than he really is. He has a very intimidating presence. You, you know, when you're watching the Hunter Exam arc, you're like, this dude is very, very strong, and at the time he is, but then when you dive deeper into the York New City arc, or the Chimera Ant arc, you realize that he's just one of the base level antagonists. Each character seems to have more to them than just their role in the story. The antagonist isn't just evil and bad. It's very well drawn out and explained. You have people like Frollo and the Phantom Troop, which I believe is one of the best antagonist groups in anime. You know, this group that seems very ruthless and is very ruthless and powerful and they're full of these murderous people have one of the strongest relationships out of the whole series, almost rival to Gon and Killua. A good example of this is when Karapika killed Uvogen, and Krolo basically dedicated a whole requiem, is what he likes to call it, which is him just going on a murderous spree with his with his underlings. <laughs> they do this all in dedication to one member. That's what I enjoy most about Hunter Hunter. It's more than what meets the eye. Later down the line, I feel like it gets better and better and better. I feel like the role of each arc is to invest the audience more and more. You have the Hunter Exam arc that introduces, you know, the main characters, the, 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 um, what do you call it when it's four people? It's not a trio. It's something. Anyways, you got, you know, Leorio, Gon, Kilua, Karapika. You think they're going to be there all throughout the story, but they all disperse out. They're like, I have goals, and they go to complete them. And then you have the um, Greed Island arc. I'm, I'm missing some arcs right now because I haven't watched it in a while. But anyway, each arc drags out longer and longer, and I feel like it just solidifies its place in your heart. Let's dive deep into one of my favorite arcs of Hunter x Hunter, which might be expected, 
the Chimera Ant arc. It's the one of the final arcs of Hunter x Hunter, and it's the most emotional, violent, dark arc ever. When compared to the intro of going, you know, fishing, you know, just having fun, living life, wanting to see his father, like a classic shonen, you have a very dark redemption revenge story of Gon losing one of his closest friends from what he met when he was younger. This arc basically tackles each characteristic that makes Hunter x Hunter good. You have its characters, its world building, and then also what they do with how they introduce realism to such a wacky story, like how the government treats exploration and how the government treats its own civilians. It just simple things like that makes the story so good to me. Something so wacky as Hunter x Hunter, you expect it to be the opposite, but it does it the best. Uh, one of my favorite characters from the Chimera Ant arc is Shia Poof. How pathetic. You weren't by his side when it mattered. And you call yourself a royal guard? You don't even know where he is. How do you qualify as a royal guard? No. You fail as a royal guard. You might be wondering why I chose him. His character basically encapsulates the hypocrisy of the Chimera Ants. He's supposed to, you know, serve the king. That's his whole role is to serve the king, but instead does the opposite because he doesn't listen to the king. He just wants the word or the role king. He doesn't want Merowim. He goes so far as to refuse to tell Merowim his own name. You have to understand what I'm saying by actually watching the show or just watching that Chimera Ant arc, but as I explained earlier, it requires a certain amount of attention and a certain amount of engagement. And coming at number two, we have... We have Yu Yu Hakusho. If I played the intro, then uh, kudos to me because uh, I had this edit like in the back of my head this whole time. We got Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho is about this dude that dies, goes to the spirit world, comes back to life because he wasn't meant to die. And he got these super spiritual powers and becomes a spirit detective. And then his friend, uh, not his friend, his rival, he has these spirit powers somehow. He didn't die, but he just has them. And then they meet these two people. One is a demon and one is a demon too. They're both demons. And they become friends and they all become spiritual detectives and the main character is super strong. It seems like a very generic plot, but it does very well in building its characters. Are you serious? Right here, right now, bro? Dang, man. All right, my bad. Yu Yu Hakusho has one of the best tournament arcs and I'm gonna just say it right here, right now. And a lot of people agree with me because when they think of Yu Yu Hakusho, they think of the Dark Tournament arc. Get on your feet. I'm firing one last shot with all I've got, and it's going to end this fight one way or another. So no more stupid surprises or fakes. You show me everything you've got right now. When we have the Dark Tournament arc, we're introduced to some of the best characters in the show. Well, one of the best characters, I should say. We got the man, Taguro one of the best antagonists. He's basically the most villainous villain. At least you think. He has this fascination about the main character that we don't know about until later down the line of the Dark Tournament arc. You know, this tension is built up. And then you realize, oh, he just wants to fight. He's a menace. 
to grow is one of the most menacing menaces ever when we see him he he leveled a whole parking garage with the two characters standing in it was like yusuke i think it was just yusuke and him but yeah he leveled a whole parking garage and i'm like why would you do that if i was a construction worker then i was just doing my job and you have to come in and do all that you know how long parking garages take to build they take a grip they take a grip to build, and that's a lot of tax money. And you come in here and level... I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant right now, but that was a crazy scene. I still remember that. And I haven't watched Yu Yu Hakusho show in like a year. Anyways, Tagoro is a menace, and that's why I like the series. And the Dark Tournament arc just solidifies its place in my heart. And bro, Team Yurameshi is one of the best protagonist anime groups. Unlike every other shonen, the main character doesn't have a goal. He's just kind of thrown into this madness. You know, he didn't want to die. He didn't want to get these powers and he didn't want to be as strong as he is now But he understood that he had a role to play and he's thrown into that role But he understood the role and he took that role Karapika. I said Karapika. Um, his rival his rival. Um, what's his name, bro? I forget the dude's name. Oh my gosh. Hold up. All right. I'm so sorry for disrespecting you Karama. I forgot your name. Oh my god, bro Oh, hell, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on, my, my. But anyway, his rival Kurama seems so shallow at the start, you know. He's your average delinquent that just wants to fight all the time and he kept on losing to this main character. But he turned out to be a very good friend at the end. He even died. He came back to life, but he basically sacrificed his life for his team to win. Hey, Koenma. You risked your life on your Meshi's fight, and now I'm gonna do the same. So make a place for me, and make sure my wake is as good as his. There's no stopping him. And if I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna go charging at full speed! A mulberry is a tree, Kuwabara is a man, and I'll prove it. We all have to die when our time comes, but if we do our duty, we don't got regrets. So taste a little piece of my sword, Tagoro. Uh, Kuwabara, no! <laughs> Again, he solidified a place in my heart too. Pause. But anyway, that's what I like about you, Hawkins Show. It does good on characters, and um, yeah, it just does very good on characters. And now we got our last pick, and I'm gonna just say it now. Oh, I'm gonna explain why I got Bleach here. It's basically the son of Yu Yu Hakusho. They they got a lot of similarities, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. It's, it, it shows its inspiration and it does it well. Ichigo and Yusuke are basically put into the same predicament. These two strong guys from the start of the story, they have all this power they didn't know about. They're thrown into the situation and they didn't want to be in the situation, but they're in that situation and they realize that they gotta basically play their role. I'm basically gonna repeat what I said about Yu Yu Hakusho, but for Bleach. Bleach, again, it does good on its characters and you know, it does fairly well on its world building, even though it's not visually pleasing it does make a lot of sense like the soul society for instance though it's like this new place we're introduced to though we're put into this like world it's been there for however long it's been there for millions of years so it's not going to feel new it seemed old but it was new to us and the characters like kimpachi bro kimpachi is that guy he is a menace a menace black air force energy oh my gosh ken pachi was crazy when he taught ichigo about spiritual pressure bro that fight was crazy but anyway i got a lot to say about bleach man uh i'm gonna put that into another video because i did want to make a, a separate video about bleach and have my thoughts drawn out yeah man bleach is crazy <laughs> You can tell I did not have a script coming into this. I just wanted to talk and I talked. I talked a lot. And a lot of it didn't make sense, but I talked. Anyways, that's 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 the end of the video, I think. Um uh Bonkai.